Commissioner Eckert has announced that sluggers Ken Harrelson and Ernie Banks will head up a delegation of major leaguers who will tour Vietnam service bases in November. Upon arrival in Vietnam, the group will split into two units to enable them to visit as many outposts as possible. Other major leaguers on the trip are players Ron Sabota, Larry Jackson, and Pete Riker. Cardinal General Manager Bing Devine and Public Relations Director Al Fleischman will accompany the players. Ron Davis to lead off in the seventh inning for the Cardinals. Ron's 0 for 2. He's tapped to the pitcher and flied to center field. Tried to bunt, but he fouled it back. One strike. Three runs on six hits and no errors for the Cardinals. The Tigers have two runs, five hits, and they've committed one error. it back. One strike. Three runs on six hits and no errors for the Cardinals. The Tigers have two runs, five hits, and they've committed one error. Mickey Lolich getting ready. The pitch to Davis is in the dirt. One ball and one strike. ball two strikes oh, might have been too low Lolich has been tough since the first inning Cardinals touched him for a double by Brock a single by flood and a home run off the bat of Cepeda for their three runs since then he's blanked him down low he tried to get him to go fishing again two and two to Davis he'll be followed by Maxwell and then the pitcher, Nelson Brown. A 2-2 pitch. Foul back of the plate. This may be out of play, freehand chasing it. It's going to be back in the crowd. Still a ball two and a strike two count. Tigers had a big shot at Brial. In the sixth inning, they loaded the bases with two outs. Freehand bounced to the shortstop. Here's Dow Maxwell in the on-deck circle. And the 2-2 pitch coming up to Davis. Outside, and it's 3-2. and two. Payoff pitch coming up. He struck it. Davis went for the high fastball and he struck out. Number six in the strikeout department for Lowell today. The batter will be the shortstop, Dal Maxwell. He bounced to Stanley at shortstop in the second inning, struck out in the fourth. Out. A line shot into the upper deck. Maxville is hitless in this World Series in 15 trips. Here's a bouncing ball that's speared by Cash. A C the throw to Lolit. She got him. And here it is in slow motion. Cash, who is charged with an error earlier, makes a beautiful stab of this. Far off the bag. Now he has to turn and make a good throw to Lolich. 
Coming along the line into the bag and just a step ahead of Maxwell. Fine fielding play. Now Lolich, uh, rather cash, Kurt, has booted a couple of balls in this series, but around the American League, he's considered one of our better fielding first basemen. He made himself into a good one. I remember a few years ago, George, he used to have trouble over there. He worked right. at it. Nelson Bryles, the batter, and I believe he's hit. He is. A ball scooted up there and hit him on the foot. And I don't know how this inning's going to turn out with that, but uh, that might be the best play that Lolich could have made. Uh, you put Bryles on there with two outs, and you pitch to Brock with first base occupied rather than leading off in the next inning. I'm sure he didn't do it that way intentionally, but uh, it has happened. So here's that man, Lou Brock. He's had a double, a single, and a double today. A perfect afternoon. Three for three off the left-hander Lolich. One strong. We're in the seventh inning in Detroit, and the Cardinals lead three to two. Brock batting at a five seven nine batting average in this World Series. Look out! One ball and one strike. Had 11 hits in 19 trips to the plate. Pretty impressive credentials. Outside, ball two and strike one. One thing wrong with that, uh, this is Fred Lasher throwing in the bullpen for the Tigers. I going to say the only thing wrong with Kurt Flood's. World Series record, Kurt. What do you do for an encore? That's right. Hard to improve. <laughs> Missed with a curve. Not many leadoff men like this who can open an inning with a home run or beat out a little infield bounce. Brock. He's been quoted as saying that that might be the reason he doesn't steal 100 bases a year. He hits a lot of doubles and triples and uh, doesn't get the chance to steal like the fellows that would be on first base. A 3-1 pitch coming up. Got the fastball by. Three and two. A ball three and a strike two count to Lou Brock. Bryles at first will be running on this pitch. Two outs in the seventh inning. Interesting to see what Lolich throws on this 3 2 pitch. Fastball hit hard. McAuliffe, a great play. The throw, and he got him. What a play by McAuliffe. Here it is. This one nearly ripped his glove off. No runs in the inning, no hits, no errors, one left, and the scores we go into the bottom of the seventh, the Cardinals three and the Tigers two. Don Wirtz will lead off for the Tigers in the seventh, and we've got a pitcher throwing in the bullpen, so we might have a pinch batter for Lolich in this inning. Wirtz 0 for 1 officially. Takes a curve down low. This is Fred Lasher throwing in the Tiger bullpen and left-hander Joe Horner throwing in the Cardinal bullpen. Tap that foul. Now, George, I'm still marveling at that play McAuliffe made. You can't hit a ball any harder than Brock did that time. Way to get him out, I guess. He nearly lost the hand of the second baseman on it, but that was a great play by McAuliffe. Joe Horner in the Cardinal bullpen. One ball, one strike to Don Wirtz. This is 
out of play off to the right. One ball, two strikes. Tigers needing a run to get back in this ball game. The Cardinals lead three to two. The pitch to work. Curveball is in there. Call out on strike. Nelson Bryles broke a dandy right over the heart of the plate. And Lolich is going to bat for himself. They're going to leave him in there, and this suits the crowd. Pretty tough to take this fellow out. He gave up three runs in the first inning, and he's blanked them in the next six. One ball, no strike. I would imagine, Kurt, that Mayo Smith is figuring that Lolich maybe will shut him out the rest of the way, and the Tigers with the top of their batting order coming up in the eighth and ninth. They'll be looking for a break or maybe one swing of the bat with somebody on. One swing of the bat. They've done it so often this year. Ball two and no strike. Lolich has been by far the best pitcher he's had. Well, he has been by far the best pitcher the Tigers have had in this World Series. Bryles behind 2 and 0 oh, the pitch. Got it in there. Ball 2 and strike 1. Lolich is not a bad hitter. He hit a home run in game number 2 and he gets his bat on the ball. Here's the 2 1 pitch. There's a pop fly into right center field. Davis coming in. He can't get it. And Lowitz is going to have to hold with a single. Javier made a good play. Ron Davis was coming on for this when you'll see him dive. But the ball hits the turf. And now going out there. Is the second baseman Javier, and if he had not been alert, Lolich might have been able to go into second and put the tying run in scoring position. And here's Billy Muffet, the pitching coach, coming out again, George. He's got a left-hander, Joe Harner, in the bullpen, and Harner turned in a great job here on Saturday, and uh, he might want him to pitch to McCullough in this spot. He does. The call has gone out, and we're going to get Joe Harner. There's a break in the action here at Detroit with the score, the Cardinals three and the Tigers two. Hello, you technical masterpiece, you. This time people are going to see what goes on inside a 69 Plymouth Fury, not just how beautiful you are. All the time we engineers spend giving you more room inside. And this gorgeous unitized body. Mm. Oh, sure it's gorgeous because we give it a seven-step dip and spray anti-rust treatment. And who's going to tell about the big brakes if I don't? And an enormous trunk. And the magnificent chrome steel torsion bars. Wait a second. Beauty is only skin deep. in the stands and find Tony Kubek. Thank you, George Cal. A moment ago, we met Preston Gomez, manager of the San Diego Padres. Standing to my left right now, the manager of the Montreal Expos, Gene Locke. Gene, what are your plans for October 14th when you select your players? Well, it's not going to involve uh, many players that are playing in this game today, uh, Tony, because we're not going to get this high caliber of player. But uh, we've uh, thoroughly scouted every organization in baseball and all their minor league players. And we think that uh, if we can uh, spend our money wisely, we can come up with a representative team. Gene, you played against Bob Gibson. You managed against him. You've managed against Lou Brock. What do you do with that Brock? Well, there's no way to stop him, really. If you can, uh, if you can convince your uh, pitchers to go ahead and pitch him like a, like a real good hitter instead of, I think that the, the Detroit club is trying to keep him off the base 
and they're giving him an awful lot of fastballs to hit. And the idea, I think, is just to pitch him like a real good hitter and ignore the fact that he might steal bases because there's nothing you can do about that. Gene Mock, thank you so much, and good luck next year with the Montreal Expos. Thanks, Tony. Now let's go back upstairs. Joe Horner, the new pitcher, won eight and lost two during the regular season. Here's some slow motion of his action. Fine earned run average, 1.47. 31 years old, born in Dubuque, Iowa, lives now in St. Louis. Dick McAuliffe, the batter, the pitch is foul back. On Saturday here, Horner pitched three and two-thirds innings in relief, and he gave up one hit, and that was to the pinch batter, Wayne Fulmer. Save the ball game for Ray Washington. One strike to McAuliffe. Ground ball. This one's to right field for a base hit. Lulich will have to hold up as the throw comes in to second base. McAuliffe came through with a bouncing single into right, and the Tigers are threatening in the seventh inning. They loaded the bases in the sixth. And here in the seventh, they have runners at first and second with one out. Lulich nearly made too big a turn there at second. He got back. As the throw came into uh, Javier, and that was what the crowd was ooing about. Well, the Tigers have their right-handed batters coming up with Stanley and then Kaline against Horner. The tying run is at second base. The lead run at first with only one out. Mickey Stanley's had a triple today in three trips. Ball, it's outside. One ball and no strikes. Here's the All-American boy, Mickey Stanley. Strike, he cut the corner. One and one. Bryles pitched six and one-thirds innings today. He gave up six hits, two runs. He walked three, and he struck out five. Horner's pitched to one batter. He's given up a single. One ball, one strike to Stanley. High pop fly. This may be in the seats. It is. Cepeda was over there, leaning in as far as he could. That's umpire Bill Howler with him. Well, these umpires are right on the ball. They go over there to see that uh, if the player reaches in, he doesn't catch it off the hand of a fan or something. If he does, why, well, it's no catch. One ball, two strikes to Mickey Stanley. Tigers trying to get back in this ball game. They trail three to two in the seventh inning. Horner taking a lot of time. This is Red Shandy's watching the action. Outside, he tried to nip the corner, and it's two and two. The wind has picked up in intensity. It's blowing hard from the left field foul pull over to the corner in right field. Mayo Smith in the Tiger dugout. Everything riding for the Tigers today. They cannot afford a slip. A ball two and a strike two count to Stanley. Side. Almost hit him with that one. Three and two. Here's a big decision to make, Kurt. Do you start those runners with K-Line coming up next, or you take a chance on a ground ball double play? That's why they pay managers big money. I doubt they'll be running with Lowich at second, but they might. He's a pretty good base runner. Three and two to Mickey Stanley. 
Down low and he walked him. Well, you can see the crowd coming alive here at Tiger Stadium. A walk to Stanley loaded the bases, and here's the old pro, Al Kaline. Bases loaded, one out. Cardinals lead by a run in the seventh inning. Kaline had a single his last time up. One strike on a fastball. Horner throws a good live fastball that will run away from the right-handed batter. He'll throw it toward the center of the plate and it'll run away to the outside part. He keeps it down low in a spot like this, hoping they'll hit it on the ground. There's a drive into right center, a base hit for Kaline, a run in. There's another one coming in. And the Tigers have taken the lead. K Lines had a lot of hips in his career, George. That may have been his biggest. That might have been the biggest hit of his life, Kurt, as he lined the single in the right center to drive in two runs. The Tigers have taken a four to three lead. They still have runners at first and third with only one out. And the batter will be Norman Cash. This crowd of 53,654 standing in a roaring salute to K-Line and the Tigers right now. The pitch to Cash. Ground ball, right field, base hit. K-Line hitting for third. Here's the throw. It's going to be close. Nope, it's cut off. Muffet coming to the mound. Norman Cash hit the first pitch, a sharp ground ball in the right field, driving in the runner from third, and Kaline with some daring bit of base running, raced to third base. Davis' throw was offline toward the left field line, and here's the new pitcher coming in. It's going to be Ron Willis. And there's a break in the action here at Tiger Stadium with the score, the Tigers five, and the Cardinals three. Tony Kubek. Thank you, George Cal. We're talking down here behind the Cardinals dugout to Bob Skinner, manager of the Philadelphia Phillies. Bob, the Cardinals look great, but these Tigers just don't want to give up. No, sir, Tony. They're coming back in this game just like they've done all year. And uh, like you say, the Cardinals have an exciting ball club. They do everything, but so do the Tigers. And they're showing it right here in this inning. They're coming back. They're playing well, and they haven't given up, and they're going to go on. And Probably this thing will probably go a lot further than a lot of people think it will. You think we'll, we'll see Gibson pitch another ball game then? I, I certainly do because they've got their momentum going right now. They've motivated themselves and they've come right back out of a losing situation. They're winning now and they're going to be tough. Bob Skinner, thank you so much. Good luck with the Phillies next year. Nice to have you. Thank you. Bob. Let's go back upstairs. This is Ron Willis showing a little of his slow motion delivery. Ron, 25 years old, lives in Memphis, Tennessee, pitching to Willie Horton. Willie fouls it back and out of play. Horner did not get a man out. He gave up three hits, two runs, walked one. We've got an all Memphis, Tennessee battery right now. Ron Willis, born in New Bern, Tennessee, now lives in Memphis. Tim McCarver, of course, a Memphis Tennessee boy. It's one strike to Willie Horton. Runners at first and third. Still only one out. The Tigers have taken a five to three lead. 
He pops it up on the infield. Shannon at third base in foul territory makes the grab. So Willie Horton is out on a pop up. That's out number two, and the batter will be Jim Northrup. Willis getting a big man in a tough spot there. You know, looking at K-Line over there at third, George, over the years, the complete player, and he showed it in this series with big hits, good fielding, and he's always had that great judgment on the bases, especially going from first to third. He's about the only Tiger that would have gone from first to third on that hit by Cash. Here's the pitch to Northrop. One ball, no strikes. Down in the Tiger bullpen, Ray Euler, the regular Tiger shortstop, is beginning to loosen up. So he'll probably come in to play shortstop in the eighth inning. Here's the one and zero pitch. Outside. Ball two and no strikes to Northrop. Tigers have picked up three runs in this inning. They've taken a five to three lead over the Cardinals. Shot of young Ron Willis. Outside. 3 and 0 to Northrop. He might be swinging on this 3 and 0 pitch. He does and bounces it. Cepeda, a good play. Cepeda saved a run with a diving stab of a hard hit ground ball as Northrop, swinging at a 3 0 pitch, hit it hard, and Cepeda saved a run. Three runs in the inning on four hits. There were no errors, two left, and the score at the end of seven the Tigers five and the Cardinals three. changes in the Tiger lineup. Ray Euler, here's Ray, has gone in to play shortstop. Mickey Stanley has moved to center field. Jim Northrup has moved to left field. And Willie Horton is out of the ball game. Julian Javier to lead off in the eighth inning for the Cardinals. He'll be followed by Flood and then Cepeda. He taps it out in front of the plate. This is going to be a tough play. The throw, safe. Javier hit it right on the end of the bat, and there wasn't much that Lolich could do about it. An infield single for Javier. He's at first with nobody out, and the batter will be flood. Action in the Tiger bullpen. Fred Lasher, a right-hander, and John Hiller, a left-hander. See the runner at first base, Javier, along with Norm Cash. Cardinals three and the Tigers five. We're in the eighth inning. One ball, no strikes to Kurt Flood. Kurt's had a single today and three trips. Bouncing ball up the middle. Good stop by McAuliffe. They've only got one. That's all. McAuliffe made a great play back of the bag. Could only get one. And here it is. McAuliffe making his second outstanding play of the game. Right on back of the bag, and they'll flip to Euler, and they knock down that front man. He has played. A very steady second baseman for this game, and he's been brilliant in this one. Kurt, you see the natural instincts of a shortstop here as Euler turned to go to first. And he's just thinking double play all the way. He had no chance to get uh, flood, but uh, he had it on his mind. Orlando Cepeda, the batter. He's had a home run today in three trips. Cepeda. 
He hit a curveball into the left field seats in the first inning, and I don't think he's seen a curve since. Cepeda calling time for a moment. He wants to go to the rock. If Detroit should win today, Jim Simpson and Sandy Koufax will be bringing World Series reports your way again Wednesday at 1.30, 12.30 Central, just before the sixth game of the World Series. One strike to Cepeda. We're in the eighth inning, a runner at first, one out, the Tigers lead by two. Coming in, calling for it. He puts it away. Cepeda is out on a fly to right. That's two down, and the batter will be Mike Shannon. Lolich went right back to the fastball with him as he drilled one into the outside part of the plate, and Cepeda popped it up. There's Shannon, who's 0 for 3. He's been on once today. Safe on an error in the fourth inning by Norm Cash. Batting an even 300 in this series. He's had six hits and 20 trips. Foul ball. One strike. Looks like Lolich has gone to the whip right now, Kurt. He right now is firing that fastball uh, better than he has any time in the game. Norman Cash holds against the runner at first base. The pitch coming up to Mike Shannon. Outside. One ball and one strike. I don't know what's going to happen the rest of the way, but you really have to give Lowley's credit. They have scored three runs off him in the first inning. He toughened up. Missed a very courageous game. Here's the 1 1 pitch. Her ball is too high and it's ball two in strike one. Tigers have out hit the Cardinals nine to seven. They've outscored them five to three. A three run rally in the seventh. Put the Tigers in front. A shot that's fouled on the third baseline. Shannon hit one like that yesterday just inside the line. This one was about a foot outside. It's a ball two and a strike two to this big third baseman. Lulich being very careful with Shannon. He knows with one swing of the bat he can tie the score. Here's the 2 2 pitch. He struck him out. Lowly threw the fastball by him and he struck him out. No runs on one hit. There were no errors. One left. And the score at the end of seven and a half innings of play the Tigers five and the Cardinals three. Let's go down to Tony Kubek. Thank you, George. I guess this fellow needs no introduction. Mr. Dizzy Dean. Dizzy, we going back to St. Louis? Tony, that's all indication we're definitely going back to St. Louis. Uh, these Tigers showed me today that they came from behind, and this Lotus is quite a guy, and it looks like we're definitely going to St. Louis. It's a great series. It reminds me of a lot like the 34 series, Tony. You've been in a few of them yourself, partner. You know what it is. Uh, Brock runs like that series gang you had that year. <laughs> yes, he's quite a ball player. A very graceful ball player. Very interesting looking ball player. Dizzy Dean, thank you so much. Good luck to you. Let's go back upstairs. Thank you, Tony. Bill Freehand will lead off in the eighth inning for the Tigers. Freehand, Wirt, and then Lowlich. One ball, no strike. Two. Nope, it's a strike. Harvey giving us a delayed call, and then he went up with the right hand. One strike to Freehand. Two strikes. He swung at a curveball. Bill is still looking for his first World Series hit. Oh, 
They want to have a look at the baseball. And Doug Harvey is going to put a new one in play. He didn't even look at it. He says if freehand doesn't like it, I don't either. And uh, so we'll just put a new one out. Here's the two strike pitch. He struck him out. Freehand goes down swinging. Well, there's one away in the eighth inning, and the batter will be worse. Well, we can look ahead a bit to the top of the ninth inning. The Cardinals will have McCarver, Davis, and Maxville to schedule three batters in the ninth inning. Don Wirth, the batter. He lands it right into the glove of Ron Willis. A line shot that Willis speared on the mound. Well, quickly, there's two outs, and here's Lowich, and he'll get a standing ovation. A standing ovation from 53,000 people for Mickey Lowlich. And a well-deserved ovation, you might say. A bouncing ball to the shortstop. Maxville over to first, and the inning is over. So the Tigers go out quickly in the eighth. No runs, no hits, no errors, none left. And the score as we go into the ninth inning, the Tigers five and the Cardinals three. This is one of Canada's three luxury cars. Like the other two, it costs around seven or eight thousand dollars, weighs two and a half tons, has a huge engine and power equipment. But this is the longest of the three, the one with the five speaker stereo system, with the chrome steel torsion bar front suspension, built in headrest pillows, slightly larger brakes, and if you like, a separate rear seat heater and defroster. Can you tell which luxury car this is by what goes into it? You should be able to, because two of the things that go into any luxury car are you and about seven or eight thousand dollars of your money. Find out more about the all new 1969 Imperial LeBaron. to McCarver. Tim struck out in the first inning, walked in the fourth, had a line drive straight to K-line in the sixth inning. He's over two. Mickey Lolich getting ready. Here's the one-two pitch. A base hit to center field. He hit a curveball and he lined it into center field. So McCarver comes through with a line single to open the ninth inning. And the batter will be Gagliano batting for Ron Davis. And as we look to the Cardinal dugout, Spezio has a bat over there, and he may come up to hit for Maxwell. Gagliano, the batter, with a runner at first and nobody out in the ninth inning. Gagliano has been to bat one time in this series. He's 0 for 1. Statistics provided by Alan Roth here in the booth with us. Our production manager here in the booth is Jim O'Gorman. Fly ball, center field. Mickey Stanley moves in to make the play. He's got it, and there's one out. One out. Maxville scheduled a bat, and Ed Spezio has moved into the on-deck circle, and here he is. Spezio is going to come on and bat for Maxville. And as Spezio comes in, the commissioner of baseball, William D. Eckert, the secretary treasurer, Charles Seeger, Director of Public Relations, Joe Rackler, and his assistant, Monty Urban, who have been in charge of this series. Here's Ed Spezio. He'll bat for the shortstop, Dal Maxville. 
And Roger Maris has moved into the on-deck circle. He'll bat for the pitcher, Ron Willis. Mickey Lolich getting ready. Her ball is in there. One strike. There's Roger Maris in the on-deck circle. Shane Deese has gone to his bench here in the ninth inning. Tigers lead by two. McCarver at first base with one out. A foul ball that'll be out of play. Two strikes. You know, Kurt, it's got to be tough to come off that bench and pinch hit against a man throwing as hard as Lolich and with the shadows as they are out there, and it's hard to see right now. That's right, George. And cool and that shadows of their own dugout, too. That's right. You sit oh. over there all day and... Uh, have to come off and face this man. Here's the two strike pitch. Ooh, he just missed with a fastball, one and two. He had two strikes on McCarver when he lined a single to center, and he got Gagliano. Now it's one and two to Ed Spizio. The pitch. This one's fouled off to the left. Still a ball and two strikes. Tim McCarver at first base. Here's a shot from center field. He's showing you freehand, flashing the signs out to Lolich. See the batter standing in the darkness and the pitcher in the bright sunshine. And the one-two pitch just about ready to be delivered. Here it is. Foul tip. Almost got it by him. He foul tipped it in and out of the mitt of freehand. It was a good curveball. Lolich threw a lot of curves in St. Louis. He was not real fast. Today he's been quick. trying to put it away here in the ninth inning and send this World Series back to St. Louis on Wednesday. One ball, two strikes. Tiger infield at double play depth. The pitch. Down low and it's two and two. A ball two and a strike two count. It's BZO batting for Dow Maxville. This is out of play, off to the right. Well, Spezio continues to foul off the good ones. He's hanging tough in there against Lolich. He's getting a little break right now because the sun has moved behind the cloud and there's no shadows out there to battle. Lolich gets set. The 2 2 pitch. Another foul that'll be out of play. Lolich is getting a little break right now because the sun has moved behind the cloud and there's no shadows out there to battle. Lolich gets set. The 2 2 pitch. Another foul that'll be out of play. Well, the battle goes on here in the ninth inning. Cardinals got three in the first inning of this ball game, and Lolich has blanked them ever since. The Tigers got two in the fourth. Three in the seventh to take a five to three lead, and that's where we stand. Five to three in the top of the ninth. One out with a runner at first base. The two two pitch. Another foul. It's out of play. Lulich keeps pumping the fastball at Spezio in this spot, and Ed fouling it back. Come on, 
Mickey gets ready. Another foul tip. Boy, he almost got that one by him. Spezio swung at the last moment and foul tipped it right off the mid of freehand. Catchers will tell you that there's no way to catch a foul tip. It either lands right in the mitt and stays there, or it doesn't. Uh, you can't judge it. If it deflects it an inch or so either way, it's going to hit on the side of the mitt and bounce away. Still two and two. Curveball hit foul. Well, he hits the curves foul and he hits the fastballs foul. It's about seven that Spezio has fouled off and uh, the tension keeps building here at Tiger Stadium. Well, you can see part of the crowd here and very much pro Tiger crowd in Tiger Stadium. Pulling for Lolich to get him out here in the ninth inning. Bouncing ball to left field. A face hit for Spezio. So the Cardinals keep fighting back. They've got runners at first and second with one out. And Roger Maris is going to bat. We're going to get a runner. I believe it's Schofield. Schofield's going to run for Spezio. Mayo Smith on the Tiger dugout. You see that situation. He couldn't come any closer to striking a batter out than Lolich did when that batter keeps fouling him off time after time. I don't know if time to come through that base hit. You're right, Kurt. So the Tigers. Facing Roger Maris in this spot with two on and one out, and they lead by two in the ninth inning. Lolich delivers. Got the fastball by one strike. Here's that man in the on deck circle. This was the one that they wanted to keep out of that batter's box in this inning. The only way they can do it now is with a double play ball. Roger Maris with a one strike count. Up high one and one. McCarver opened this inning with a single. Gagliano batting for Ron Davis flied to center. Spezio came through with a single to left. He was batting for Maxville. Now Maris is batting for Ron Willis. One ball, one strike. Strike, good pair of balls. One ball, two strikes. Mickey Lowley just exploded that curve right over the heart of the plate. Mickey gets ready. Boy, can you imagine the pressure he's under? He's got to get him out to continue this World Series. He struck him. Roger Maris went for a bad pitch and he struck out. That's out number two, and the batter is Lou Brock. Strikeout is number eight for Lulich today. They got Lou Brock out his last time up, Kurt, and his batting average dropped to 550 in this World Series. And they got him out on a ball that nearly killed McCollum. Nearly lost their second baseman. Well, uh, this is the way championship ball games uh, Turn out, he comes right down to strength against strength, and Lowlich against Brock. 
with two on and two outs in the ninth inning and the Tigers lead by two. Brock had three hits today and four trips. Fly ball is foul and out of play. One strike. He had a double in the first inning and scored a run. Singled up the middle in the third. And he doubled against the fence in left field in the fifth inning. In the seventh inning, he hit a vicious line drive one hop that McAuliffe made a great play on to throw him out. Standing in with a one strike count. And Mickey Lolich, very intense as he looks in. The pitch. Outside, it's one and one. You don't see this Brock pull away from left handed pitching. Once in a while, he'll give a little bit on a curveball, but, but not much. He stays right there. There's a tap to the pitcher. It should be over. Over to Cash, and it's all over. Mickey Lowley turns in a great job as he got Brock to tap it right back to the mound. And he raced to first base with it, as you saw, and he flipped it over to Cash, and the ball game is over. In the ninth inning for the Cardinals, no runs on two hits. There were no errors, two left. And the final score of the game, the Tigers five and the Cardinals three. Now trailing three nothing, Mickey Lowlich. Get out the Cardinals the rest of the way, and he's now down on the field. Let's get down there with the Tiger Hero and Tony Kubek. All year long, and we've got a guest. Right. Governor, Most Governor George Romney, Romney Congratulations. congratulating Romney. Mickey Lowman. That's terrific, Mickey. Thank you, you're, Thank you. you're the hero of Tiger Town, I'll tell you. Thank Governor, you know, all year long, this club has been bouncing back, and of course, they did it again today on the strength of Mickey Lowman. Uh, Mickey and Al came out in the whole box. Thank you so much, sir. Mickey. Let's talk about the ball game and your performance. We just mentioned to Governor Romney all year long, you guys have been bouncing back, showing the baseball world exactly what you're made of. Today you bounce back from a three-run deficit. Congratulations. Thank you very much, Tony. Like you said, all year it's been the type of team that we've had. When we've been down, we've always come through with the, the crucial base hits, and we've always come back to win the ball games when we were behind. The club has been great at it all year, and it's really an exciting ball club, and it's an exciting team to watch. And I know the people in the city of Detroit and some of the people that saw the game around the nation today had to see a real exciting ball club. Mickey, let's talk a little bit about that man that's been pestering you. You couldn't keep Brock off base today, and yet you still beat him. Now, that's a key to me. Well, Lou is one heck of a ball player. I'll admit I had trouble keeping him off base. He was, uh, I was surprised today how good of a hitter he was. I knew he had the great speed, and I heard he was a great outfielder, and they said that you know he'd hit a lot of balls, chop him into the dirt and get on base like this. But today he showed me that he had more power than I ever thought he could ever have. You know, Mick, uh, a couple of days ago, there was talk in the newspapers and around the baseball world. There was a feud between you and Lou Brock. You had said something. Somebody said, what is the true story? Well, the story came out in one of the Detroit newspapers that I called Lou Brock a showboat. And Tony, I'll say it right here. I never said anything like this whatsoever. The question that came up was, why was Lou stealing when he was five runs behind over in St. Louis last Thursday? I said he was trying to do one of two things. One, he was trying to rile me, upset me, for the next guy would get a base hit. Possibly I'd get upset enough or I'd give up a home run and they'd score the runs to catch up in a ball game. And I said the second reason might be that maybe he was going to try to set a major league record for a World Series. And I didn't blame him for that either. But some reporter in Detroit tried to make a big deal out of something, but it wasn't true at all. Mickey Lolich, thank you so much. I know you want to get in there and change your jacket. Right now, I want to call in a couple of people that want to congratulate you, I'm sure. I'll do it right now and let you go. Okay, Tony, thank you very much. Thank you, Mickey Lolich. I want to call in right now, Al Kaline. Al, congratulations. Thank you, thank you. It's a real big hit for me. Uh, it wasn't one of the harder ones I hit, but it was one of the nicer ones, I I believe. guess it was a big one. You kept the thing going, you drove in the runs. You know, yesterday, Al, you hit the two-run home run, probably one of the biggest hits in your life but you couldn't really enjoy it. You've been the type of player all your career, has been such a team man, and I saw you in the locker room afterwards. You lost, you hit a home run, but you still, you still didn't enjoy it, and this is a tribute to you. You've been a great team man. Well, Tony, when I hit the home run, it felt mighty good, you know, it put us two runs ahead, but, it, you know, when a team loses, uh, it takes all the glory out of any personal uh, things that I might have done. Uh, 
the big thing in this game is always winning, and that this is what I've always felt. And I'm just happy that our team's been able to bounce back, and now we'll go to St. Louis, and uh, maybe we can just squeeze it out. You never know. Well, you look like you've got the momentum going. There was one big break in this ball game early in the game when a bad hop got over the head of Javier. And, of course, this seemed to really excite you all, electrify all. You went right on from there and got hot. Well, this seems like what happens all year. When there is a little spark or, or somebody does something outstanding, it seems like it drives the other fellow just a little bit more. And uh, I think this is what happened today, that uh, it took a bad hop, and uh, the other guys uh, got a little charge out of it, and we, we went on from there. Al, let's ask about your pitching plans for that important game coming up in St. Louis. There'll be an off day, but can McLean pitch? Can Wilson pitch? Both may be injured. I, I doubt very seriously whether either of them will pitch in that series. I think uh, Mayo Smith's plans right now will go with uh, Joe Sparma and, and the whole bullpen and, and probably come back with Lowlich again. In other words, you do not think that McLean and Wilson will see any more action in the series? I really don't think so. McLean's arm's bothering quite a bit, and Earl's leg is just too bad for him to go out there and pitch. And, uh, I think Joe's, Joe will come up with a big game, and uh, we, have, we have some good boys in the bullpen, and maybe the pressure won't be so great now. Al, I think the Cardinals felt that after they got that three-run lead, it was going to end right here, but I said this to Lolich, I'll say it to you, too. The baseball world has been astounded all year long by the way you've performed. The whole Tiger ball club, Lolich came out there today, dropped behind. Once again, the Tigers did what they've been so famous for, the power, and today it really wasn't a heck of a lot of power, but you just put things together, and you win ball games in the late innings. What is it? What's going on on the bench? Who's egging you on, or is it just this personal pride? Well, it's pride. You know, we, we're representing the American League, and we haven't been a very good uh, representative so far. Uh, you know, we, we were saying, let's go out and play a good ball game and uh, do the best we can. If we lose, fine, but we got a lot of pride at stake. Uh, we're representing the American League, and we just want to do a better job than we've been doing. Al Kaline, thank you so much. I like to call him a person that you know very well. Mr. Fetzer? I'd like to call him the owner of the Detroit Tigers right here, and I know he wants to congratulate you, Mr. John Fetzer. Well, I tell you right now, this is a great day for me because our boys have demonstrated once again that they can come from behind and they can do the job. And Al here has shown himself to be a pro all the way through, and I couldn't be more proud of a ball player in my life than I am Al K. Lyon. And that Mick was pretty good out there today, too, wasn't he, Al? It was just great. Yes, he showed uh, he got off to a bad start, and uh, but he came back and battled all the way, and I show what a pro he is, and he didn't let himself get upset by the three runs in the first inning. Mr. John Fetzer, Al Kaline, we'll see you in St. Louis. Yes, we'll, we'll be there, and we'll play our best. We'll Thank be you there. so much, Al Kaline. Thank you, Mr. John Fetzer. Now let's go back upstairs. And uh, thanks to Tony Kubek down on the field, this was one of the most exciting World Series games of recent years. The Tigers, who had not played well here in the field especially, sparkled with good plays today. A call up made, too. Willie Horton threw Lou Brock out of the plate in the fifth inning. And then, of course, there are a couple of key plays. K-Line getting the hit with the bases loaded. But I think one of the keys of the game was one out in the Tigers trailing when Mayo Smith let Mickey Lolich hit in the seventh inning, and he started the rally with a uh, Texas Ligger in the right center, George. Kurt, he didn't want to take Lolich out. Uh, he was behind by one run, and even if they don't score in the seventh inning, he's got the eighth and the ninth inning, and... He figures Lolich is going to hold him in. And uh, with a one-run lead here... Uh